What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm going to be bringing you guys an updated Magic Spectre deck profile for the post September 2024 ban list. And we all know this ban list made some crazy changes to the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG so I wanted to update this deck and really show you guys how to be competitive with it. But that's not all because we're also going to be doing a combo video in tomorrow's video where I'm going to be showing you guys one card and two card combos that are absolutely insane. So all you got to do is like this video and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for that but also other YouTube content that we do here which is like deck profiles, vlogs, product openings, all of that good stuff, you'll catch it right here on the channel. So make sure to like and subscribe for that. And with that being said, I want to show you guys what the new Magic Spectre deck profile looks like for the September 2024 ban list. Let's go. So just before we get into the main deck here, I do want to say that there is something that may take you guys by surprise when you see it, but I promise you I'll explain it when I get there and it'll make a lot of sense. But first, something that is very obvious is three Bambuku, best normal summon of the deck, one of the best cards in the deck, of course. The fact that it's untargetable is insane. It's one of those cards that's basically a straddles for the deck, but it's untargetable. So you can't normal summon Bambuku and your opponent having like an imprint for it because that's that's it's just immune to it, right? So it's just absolutely insane. So three Bambuku, of course, best normal summon, three Yamarashi as well, one of the best extenders in the deck and on top of that if you guys are going to notice here it's a two scale this is a five scale having your skills is very important in this deck so you guys are going to see we're going to try to even it out as much as possible because your skills are really important to get to so your five scales your two scales are very important but three yamarashi of course and then three yada yada is very important as well because it searches a spell card and if you guys know what magic specter how it plays essentially or what it does then uh, you'll know how important getting to your spells is so yada is of course very very important over here three yada then we're playing one qb and one ogama now qb is really good because it gets it's a trap card this happens uh in a lot of your combos you'll at least end on one of your traps and then this will either set a spell or a trap now the reason why you're only playing one ogama even though it can technically get to a spell or a trap is one of your spells is a quick play spell that you want to get to your hand so sometimes you'll need to activate it right so a lot of the times you don't want to go ogama into it and you're kind of stuck under it so that's why we're playing the ogama now if you guys are going to notice here another five scale another two scale we are trying to even it up as much as possible and this is a post balance deck profile right so of course we're playing kirin but we're only playing the one now this is what i wanted talk about and why it may take you guys as a surprise because kirin while it came back to three and it sounds absolutely insane it's just a one of guys you don't want to play more than one kirin especially in the pure magic specter builds it doesn't make sense to play more than one it's a level six and like i said earlier your scales are two and five so you're never going to be able to pendulum summon out your kirin and so kirin a lot of time is going to be pulled off of either your magic specter wind over here or it's going to be pulled off of your magic specter rio which is in your extra deck and that's why you're only playing the one once you get to this in rotation you're going to be bouncing it back every single time so it doesn't really matter you never really want this in your hand because it doesn't do anything for you it doesn't really have a scale effect is just a two scale drawing it is not necessarily a good thing right because bambuku is your best normal summon you don't want to be wasting your normal summon on a kirin so even though it has back at three you only want to be playing the one kirin then of course we're playing three of the majesty pegasus this card acts as a magic specter card absolutely insane because it gets you to your field spells and your field spells in this deck are essentially one of your win conditions in the deck right so three majesty pegasus and then lastly one dynamite power load this is really good because it's another high scale for you on top of that it gives you access to your dynaster power in your extra deck which is really good as well it also acts as an extender for you because you can target another draco slayer in your pendulum zone so let's say you have a majesty you can special summon it right so this acts as an extender for you as well so that is it for the magic specter monsters over here with the honorary one over here with dynamite power load but that's it for the monsters now moving on to the magic specter spells we are playing three of the wind wind is one of the most important ones it gets a lot of your combo started essentially what it does for you is it special summons a magic specter monster from your hand or your graveyard but if you tribute a wind spellcaster then you can summon it from deck instead so this is how you get to Kieran a lot of the time you contribute one of these get to Kieran which is really nice so three wind you want to end on this a lot of the time as well because it does act as a disruption on your opponent's turn because even if you're not ending on Kieran on your turn you can get to it on your opponent's turn which is really nice and then we're playing the one magic specter cyclone you guys can see quick play quick play that's why we're only playing the one ogama because we don't really want to set these right we want to be able to activate them on our turn this card pretty much says you tribute as wind spellcaster target a monster your opponent controls destroy it so it's just spot removal for you which is really nice and then for the traps we're playing one tornado which is a, another one kind of like cyclone but it banishes a monster instead and then tempest which is kind of like a solemn strike so that is it for our magic specter lineup here if you want to count the field spells which i will do right now we're playing the one majesty pegasus this is kind of like an extender for the deck which is really nice this lets you just special summon a level four or lower magic specter monster from your deck if you tribute a card so this is really good as well but the main one that you want to get into and the mvp of this deck is secret village of the spellcasters if you guys didn't notice all of the magic specter monsters are spellcasters if you're ending a lot of the time on secret village because majesty pegasus is going to get you to this it's pretty much going to lock your opponent out of 
have all of their spell cards, right? So it's gonna lock them out of their spell cards. You're gonna be able to set up a bounce with your Kirin, and then you're usually gonna be able to set up another disruption, probably one of these traps. So no spell cards, a disruption here, a disruption with the Kirin is usually, usually enough to win you a lot of games. So Secret Village is one of the most MVP cards in the deck. And uh, this is a card that you're searching if you don't already have access to it because uh, Pegasus is okay. And Pegasus comes up, usually turns two into turns three when you wanna go for game and OTK. But a lot of the time Secret Village, if you're going first is what you wanna end on. Now the rest of the deck is a lot of non-engine, which is really nice. That's one of the best things about this deck is you can play a lot of non-engine because the core is so minimal. So of course we're playing three Ash, three Imper, and the best hand traps in the format. Of course, we gotta be playing these, the most generic ones. This acts as a board breaker going second for you as well, which is really nice going first, you can set it. So three Ash, three Imperm. We're playing two Valor. I'm gonna explain this in a second, but we're playing two Valor, one Droll, one Ghost Mourner, one Nib. And the reason for that is because we're playing three crossout designator. Of course, we're playing the one called by the grave as well. Now I'm gonna talk about this for just a little bit here. This deck, although you guys might be wondering, why are we playing all these cards? Bambuku doesn't lose to Imperm. Bambuku doesn't lose, or all your magic specters essentially, they can't be targeted. Why, 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 why are we playing this? Why are we playing crossout? And that's because they decided to give the new support Nui the, uh, the effect where it doesn't actually have that effect. Basically, this can be targeted, and a lot of the time what your opponent's gonna do is wait for you to summon this, activate Imperm on this, and a lot of your combos kind of die. So that's why we're playing the three crossout designator, of course. We also don't really have a way to play around Nibiru, which is why it's really good into Nibiru. Ghost Mourner, Effect Bela kind of act as Imperm, which also stop the Nui, which is also why we're playing cross out for these two. And uh, Droll and Lockbird, the reason we're actually playing this is, of course, you can always uh, cross out this if you need it. But this is also nice because it's a wind spellcaster. So worst comes to worst, you can normal summon this, activate your wind, uh, attribute the wind spellcaster, and then summon a magic specter from your deck, which is really nice as well, right? So that, that kind of acts as a pseudo magic specter, which is kind of nice. But that's why we're playing all these. Of course, lastly, we're playing the one Pot of Prosperity just for consistency. But three cross out, I think, is very mandatory in this deck because you need to protect this card. If this card goes through, all of your combos are good and you're going to win the game but if you knew he doesn't go through then you have a really really tough time on top of that if you just draw these they're generically good hand traps so that's never a bad thing so moving on to the extra deck over here of course we're playing the two nui two draco ryu one magister paladin and one dynaster power these are kind of like our magic specter slash draco slayer cards over here that we're playing these two are very important uh nui of course gets you to all your combos you're always going to be using one going first and then uh when you're going into turns two turns three you can go into the second one to kind of help you push for more damage and push for a lot of your combos uh ryu is very important as well because this kind of gets you to kirin you want to end on this a lot of the time because it helps you extend and push past multiple things so for example like on your opponent's turn if you already end on a kirin for example you can use this to uh, summon an Ogama. And Ogama, a lot of the time you wanna summon on your opponent's turn because you can set a spell or a trap. So a lot of time you can set another wind, set a cyclone, set a tornado, of course, which is really good as well, right? So it just helps you set up for more plays. And then these two, of course, this is just nice as like an extender as follow-up. And this kind of nice because it protects you as well. So Dynaster, Magister, Paladin, of course, the Magister Spectres. One uh, Beyond the Pendulum, of course, standard. Exceed the Pendulum, of course, is standard as well. We're playing one win. All of your Magister Specter monsters are wind. Uh, this can come up in certain matchups. Very rarely does come up a lot of time it's prosperity fodder but when it does come up is that it is insane because it helps you get into Celine and getting into Celine means you get into access code now of course you can get into Celine without needing the win but it's just another way to get into Celine which is nice a Celine is very easy to resolve in this deck and of course so all your monsters are spellcasters and in your graveyard you have effect veiler and uh, droll and lockbird as well which are spellcasters so you can summon them back off Celine as well so uh, Celine into access code is just an OTK button for you of course SP little knight one of the best cards in the game right now you have to be playing this and the post tens you should be a little bit easier easier to get, right? Baguska, Typhon, another card that should be a little bit easier to get, post tins, and then Zeus. Very standard stuff. I don't think this is too crazy if I'm being honest with you. Zeus, of course, we're playing for Baguska and these guys over here. Typhon is just generically really good as well. So that's it for the extra deck, 15 cards in the extra deck. I don't wanna explain this too much. I don't think it needs too much explaining. It's just really generically powerful cards. Moving on to the side deck, I always like to say this in all my profiles, side deck is always going to be up to personal preference. Use this as a skeleton. I kind of want to cover a little bit of all the matchups, but of course, if your locals is a bunch of you bell players, if your locals is a bunch of backward players, a bunch of combo players, whatever it is, make sure you side for your locals. This is just kind of like a generic skeleton that you guys can use. So we're playing two Nibiru, two Droll and Lockbird. This is because we're playing one and one in the main deck already. So we're playing two and two in the side deck, just uh, to side them in against matchups where they are really good into. Let's say, you know, Valor is not good into a certain matchup. So Mourner is not good into a 
certain matchup or you know your opponent is not playing mourner so you don't have to cross out for it you guys can play these instead so just some different options one harpy's feather duster two lightning storm and three evenly mash one thing this deck does struggle with going second is breaking boards and being able to play through boards so these kind of help you you don't really care about your battle phase you don't have to otk your opponent if you can just clear their board set up your own combo you're pretty much winning the game so uh the board breakers are very important in that sense we're also playing one necro valley for a lot of the graveyard decks this card is really good because instead of ending on secret village you can end on necro valley instead and necro valley is absolutely insane three d barrier d barrier is good into the tempai matchups into the branded matchups into any other pendulum mirror matches like it's so good into so many different things so 3d barrier of course is insane and then lastly we're playing the one shifter shifter might be like oh why are you playing this it doesn't even make any sense well you lose pretty hard to shifter all pendulum decks lose really hard to shifter so we're signing this in because if we know we're playing against a shifter deck something like kashtira something like tempai something like mimigul that you like you likely will lose to shifter you side it in so that you can cross out it essentially it's just a cross out target but again you guys can just use this for a template you don't of course have to uh play this exact side deck it's just a skeleton for you guys to use the only two cards i will say that i recommend in like pretty much every format is shifter and necro valley because uh cross out you auto lose to, as long as this card is in the format in the game you lose to this so hard so i like playing one for cross out and then necro valley as well because every time there's a graveyard deck you just side this in instead of secret village and you're gonna win the game a lot of the times too but again just use this as a skeleton whatever you guys are most comfortable with so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope I explained why we're only playing one Kirin well enough because although it's now back at three post ban lists, it doesn't need to be played at three in this deck. One Kirin is all you're going to need. And I promise you, if you're able to resolve your combos in this deck, it's absolutely insane. And you guys are gonna see what the combos look like in tomorrow's video. Now, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We are back to uploading, baby. We're back. Deck profiles, vlogs, product openings, all that good stuff. You'll catch it right here on the channel. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.